Hello, I'm Dr. Winston Delahaye, consultant psychiatrist at the University Hospital of the West Indies and Deputy Dean in the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of the West Indies. I am speaking to you with a background of being a former Chief Medical Officer in Jamaica and a former Military Medical Officer and Medical Officer for Disaster Management for the Caribbean for some time. We've been faced with having to deal with the coronavirus on our shores. My focus today is not on the physical aspects of this viral infection, but on the mental health aspects, the potential mental health impact on us as healthcare professionals. And by that, I mean physicians, nurses, porters, ambulance drivers, administrative staff, in any hospital, in any health facility in this country. We're faced with having to deal with an increasing number of persons faced with infection by the coronavirus. If the trends go like they've gone elsewhere, these numbers will increase exponentially. We're therefore exposed to significant stress and getting assistance in addressing these stressful settings will be very useful. My talk will be in two parts. One, the challenges faced by healthcare professionals with any infectious disease outbreak. And two, some self-care tips in maintaining your mental health at a time like this. Let's start with challenges for healthcare professionals in an outbreak of this nature. To begin with, we're faced with having to see a larger number of patients coming to the emergency room to our healthcare facility than we are accustomed to. This surge in the number of patients leads to the need to be interacting with not only more patients, but maybe for longer times with each patient as they themselves are fearful they could have contracted an illness that may lead to their death. Along with this is the ongoing risk of the healthcare professionals themselves being exposed to the coronavirus associated with death and severe illness, but more importantly, taking this virus home with you where potentially you could impact your family. Along with this, we, we must add equipment challenges, shortages in the equipment required for the procedures which we are engaged in at this time. And last but not least, the psychological stress of dealing with this new illness and so many persons. Let's now look at some strategies for dealing with these stressful settings. One, self-care. This is a time when despite increased hours of work, we must ensure that we're getting adequate rest, we're taking good care of our hygiene, eating well, and exercising. It is very important that at these times we take appropriate breaks. Very often persons feel guilty that others are working and they are on a break, but it is in so doing that you will be able to sustain your being at work for a longer period of time. Intermittent breaks for short periods would be very important. At this time, when you have your time off, it is very important that we get adequate exercise in addition to adequate adequate rest. So let me encourage you all to do some form of exercise while of course maintaining your social distancing. This could be anything from a walk, a light jog, or anything that's your form of exercise. I encourage you to connect with your colleagues. Have discussions where you have some time, you're on a break, another colleague may be on a break. Positive discussions may not necessarily be around the virus, but general talks to do with day-to-day -day activities, to do with your life, their lives. We encourage constructive communication. Try to be positive as much as possible. Where there are challenges and these are being shared, one might want to express their own efforts at making things better for themselves and in so doing, encourage others to try these alternatives. This is a time to stay in touch with family. So though you're at work, it is important that at appropriate times, you're calling your relatives, your loved ones, 
sharing with them their activities, interacting, having general discussions as you normally would. I encourage you to respect differences. People are accustomed to behaving in different ways when stressed. Some may talk a little more, others may talk less. Let's encourage persons to feel comfortable. For those who may want to express more, it is good to lend a listening ear. If you talk a little less, then it's good just to be around others, providing support. That's a critical word at this time, supporting others and in so doing, supporting yourself. Though we are working with patients, we ourselves need to stay updated with the latest information. It is very important to choose credible sources like the WHO and the CDC, for example. We actually recommend that you not stay on the media throughout your shift, throughout your day, but choose times that you go on. So one example could be coming on in the morning as you get ready for work at eight o'clock thereabouts. Then uh, another shift could be in the evening, in the afternoon, you log on to see the day's activities. The point to be made is that checking in with the media multiple times throughout the day is guaranteed to increase your stress levels. Reduce your time spent in front of the television, looking at your phones about the coronavirus. Then there's a concept of self-checking, where you recognize that you've worked for a number of hours, you're now on a break, you're not feeling energized. That's important for you to get in touch with yourself to see, am I coping? Am I doing enough? Do I need a break? Do I need to stop for a moment? Ask someone for help. This is very important. Am I feeling tired? Am I falling asleep? Very important because only you know you're feeling and we need to feel free to express what we're feeling. Do I feel fearful? Do I feel sad? Am I putting my two-year-old at home in danger? We should feel free to express these feelings that we have. This is not a period of one week or two weeks. In fact, we are not sure how long that we need to be able to respond to this challenge that we face. I am therefore suggesting that despite all efforts to maintain calm, to maintain your mental well-being, there are some who will have greater need than others. If in your self-checking, you find that you are not coping, you are becoming sad, you think you have symptoms suggestive of depression, then please by all means reach out quietly to your supervisors. We are a multidisciplinary facility including psychiatric and psychological services. The help you need will be provided to you. My final point is honoring your service. Despite the frustrations, despite the challenges, you are providing a valuable and essential service to those in need. You should really encourage your colleagues and yourself, pat yourself on the back that you are doing a good job and coming up to the task at a time of need for many.